Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. It's actually the second edition I've recorded today because I recorded a crossword video earlier for those of you who like such things. Um, but this is most certainly not a crossword. It is a Fog of War Sudoku, uh, my favourite of the new Sudoku innovations. It's called Foggy Loop and it's by Anti Knight, a constructor who, well, that, that I admire hugely. I've always enjoyed Anti Knight's puzzles. I think this is relatively new, but it's been recommended to us a lot. Um, and this is what we're going to have a go at. For those of you who don't know how Fog of War puzzles work, you may be looking at this grid thinking, that looks very strange. Well, the idea is that you use the logic in the white cells that we can actually see um, to deduce things. And if we put a correct digit in the puzzle, it will clear the fog from the surroundings in the surrounding cells. So say we got this cell, it would clear the fog from all of those cells. And then you learn more about the puzzle and you, then you proceed from there. So this is going to be a great deal of fun, I suspect. And I will read you the rules in a moment or two's time. But it is pinch punch first of the month, isn't it? Which means that it is Patreon reward day. If you're a patron of the channel, get yourselves over to Patreon where we have a brand new Sudoku hunt for you. It's called Lines and Shapes. Um, I think it's seven puzzles in all. Oh, by the way, we've also got the solution videos to last month's reward as well. They are up. Um, so if you did get stuck on last month's hunt, uh, Glum Hippo's Tennis Anyone, um, then then you you're, you can find solution videos that will, will help you to see anything that you missed. Um, so they are up. Um, but yeah, the, the big news is the lines and shapes um, pack. As at the time of recording this video, which is only a few minutes past the 4 p.m. launch time, uh, no one has sent in a correct solution yet. I think it'll, I think it'll be... I think it'll be six o'clock at the earliest before we get any correct solutions and and possibly a bit later than that actually there's a couple of quite quite tricky puzzles in the pack um although there is definitely something for everybody so do do have a go at it and the chance to win um if, once you get to the end you'll be told what to do send in your solutions and you'll have a chance to win our new merch the cracking the cryptic hexagon there emblazoned on a very smart cap um, and uh, so I, I know so, I know some of you are thinking you're not going to win the competition because we've sold some of those already so um, uh, they are available but we're going to give a one away uh, for the winner of the prize um, on well uh, uh, after the 20th when we draw when we draw the winner now what else can I tell you about we have got some announcements to do today I'm going to start off with a rather lovely announcement, which isn't for a birthday, but it's for a retirement. So Duncan, your friend Ian, with whom you've worked for about 15 years, I think, um, he thought I should shout you out on your retirement. Um, he described you as one of the most brilliant people he knows, an excellent woodworker, puzzle maker, and somebody who makes toys for his grandkids. Um, and he noted you were retiring today and that I should shout you out and I'm very pleased to do that so I'm not sure if retirement is a cause for cake I'm pretty sure it is so have some chocolate cake Duncan it sounds like you've earned it um, next let's go to Jeffrey it's your birth it is your birthday today your wife Lindy wrote to us um, and I believe uh, <laughs> I love this by the way apparently Jeffrey now works at home uh, because of Covid uh, but spends his commute time watching Cracking the Cryptic to switch off his work brain. <laughs> That's quality. <laughs> that is quality, Jeffrey. Have a great birthday today with chocolate cake, of course. Um, next, George, you've turned 41 today. And I know this because your wife. Now, is it Leah or is it Leia? I don't know. Could be Leia based off Star Wars, but I, I, I am not sure. Um, well, anyway, your, your wife, Leia Stroke Leah, uh, wrote to us. Uh, she, she says you're an amazing man and she is so grateful for all the support you give the family. So, George, that sounds like um, you are one in a million and have a great day today. And then finally, Naomi, good luck uh, on your first day at Cambridge doing a master's in illustrating children's books. Your dad, Mark, um, let us know that you were off. Um, and I know that you've you've been watching. I, I think you've been watching the crossword videos, and you recently solved your first um, times quick crossword. So well done on that. Keep cracking, and you'll get the you'll get the proper one done in no time at all. Uh, I know this because 
uh, I, I know you have a very, very intelligent genes in your family. <laughs> now, that's all the news. Let's have a look at Foggy Loop. Let's see what Anti Knight has in store for us. I will put my hands on the keyboard and we will read them together. So these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. The digits along each arrow must sum to the digit in the circled cell. Okay, we can't see any circles. So imagine that was a circle. Uh, can I put circles in? I probably can actually. Um, is, is that going to be a circle? There you go. So imagine that was a circle. Uh, and imagine this arrow... Oh, hang on now. Now, now we're getting into technical areas. Let's say the arrow did that. Then in order to work out what was in this cell, we would add those three digits together. And then we would plonk the result in that square there. So that's how arrows work. Let's check I've deleted everything. I think I have. Um, arrows don't branch and don't overlap each other. Every arrow circle has exactly one arrow connected to it. Every arrow circle has exactly one arrow connected to it. Right, so that's that's not right what I just did. <laughs> so that's not right because that would have two arrows connected to the circle. So I could I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's put Let's put that in, although that might be wrong as well. I don't know. But basically, just make sure that every circle you put in the grid has just one arrow connected to it. And make sure your arrows don't branch or overlap. And then we're good to go. Um, right. Now, this is a strange part of the rules. Every cage in the puzzle is a 3x3 three three square cage. So you can see there's some cage dottedness there. And I think that means that there is a cage hidden under the fog that looks like that. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. So basically, what we're actually being told here is that this puzzle has Windoku-like properties. So there are there is a version of Sudoku, which we don't see very often. In fact, we've very rarely seen it on the channel. Um, but you might have seen it in newspapers where the puzzle is presented um, with these areas shaded and the, the green areas basically have to contain a set of the digits one to nine without repeats and it's called windoku and i think that is what anti Knight has built into this puzzle um i'm almost tempted to leave that green in there oh why doesn't that that's very strange i don't understand what's going on i'm just going to restart um so so yes, okay, so that, so all of the cages are three by three. And I think I think that means there cannot be any other cages in the in the puzzle. I want, well that is already, I suppose, a three by three <laughs> virtual cage. I was just wondering if I could plonk another one in. I, I, I don't know. But I think that's I think I think what we're being told is that all of the cages are visible um, in these white cells of the fog. Um a black dot between cells indicates cell values with a two to one ratio. Now I can see a little black dot emerging here, look. So those two squares have to be uh, in a two to one ratio, which means that one is double the other. So imagine this square here was a two. This square could either be one because two is double one, or it could be four because four is double two. So that's how black dots work. A white dot between cells indicates cells with consecutive values. So again, there's a white dot here. So imagine this square here was a two, then this square here would either be one because one is consecutive with two, or it would be three because three is consecutive with two. It would have to be one of those things. Not all dots are given. So what that's saying is imagine, imagine we found out we were looking at these two squares and there was no dot between them, then it's absolutely fine for this to say be a one and a two. Just because um, there is no dot doesn't mean they can't be consecutive or in a one to two ratio. It's just we know it's just we know positive information about that domino and about that domino and about any other dominoes in the puzzle under the fog that have black and white dots given. Do have a go. These fog of war puzzles are an absolute joy. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, now, let's get cracking. Do I restore my Windoku boxes? I might do that, you know. I might do that because I am very likely to forget that I've got Windoku boxes if I don't make some sort of effort to uh, embed that knowledge in my head. So, so what we're being told here is imagine we got that digit, then that digit couldn't appear. Obviously it can't appear in any of those squares by Sudoku, but it also can't appear in any of those squares. 
just actually while I mention while I think about it, I will also mention there is a Windoku trick, which is it derives it's a bit of set theory actually, but it often comes into play with Windoku puzzles. I will just quickly mention it. And the way to understand the Windoku trick is to think about those three columns. Now, those three columns, obviously, in the correct solution to this puzzle, will contain three sets of the digits 1 to 9. But we know that the green box is one set of the digits 1 to 9, and we know that that green box is another set of the digits 1 to 9. So actually, we know that these cells here, let's make those purple, those purple cells are all different and, well, and therefore, they have to be a set of the digits 1 to 9. So there's sort of a virtual set of the digits 1 to 9 there. And of course, that, that logic could be applied in the rows as well. So these will be a set of the digits uh, 1 to 9. Uh, so will these, and so will those. That's the only Windoku trick I know, actually. So there you go. I've told you it. Um, Right, so we're going to have to do something with the... Um, well, I'm going to look at this arrow first because I, when we were doing the example, I saw this couldn't be a circle because if that's a circle, the circle would have two arrows coming out of it, which I thought was quite clearly against the rules. I'm just going to double check that. Every arrow circle has exactly one arrow connected to it. Yeah, so that can't be true. So... Right, so that is important, isn't it? Because I think if we use the line drawing tool, we can, because this can't be a circle, we can effectively connect it up. But now we're getting into the realms of things, things becoming difficult. Imagine this was the circle connected to this arrow. That does not work because this arrow is clearly going into this square here. And that would, these four different digits well, the triangular number for four is 10. If we put one, two, three, and four on this arrow, we'd have to fill 10 at least into this square. And we can't put 10 in there because it's not a valid Sudoku digit. So actually, actually we're being told this is a circle, aren't we? That's the only way that can work. Now the, 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 the line is going off into here. And that's a bit annoying for for a reason I will explain in a moment. So this this is the geometry that we can tell about this sort of box seven arrow for sure. But what I can see is that we don't know that this finishes here. Because if this was a one, two, three triple, and say those two were a one, two pair, well, one plus two is three, and one plus two plus three is six, and that would allow those five digits to add up to nine, which could go in that square. So, hmm, so I don't think we know whether this arrow finishes or not, but what we do know is that that is at least a seven, because these squares add up to at least six if they were one, two, and three, and that must be at least a one. So that is at least a seven, the other thing we know, for what it's worth, although it might not be worth anything, is that that digit, um, let's colour it, <laughs> that digit there does appear on that arrow. Um, and we know that because imagine it didn't. If, we, if it didn't appear on the arrow, then these four digits would all be different and they would add up to at least 10 again. And this is definitely not 10 or higher. So that digit does appear there and therefore we know its value, don't we? It can't be it can't be 4. Because if it was 4, we get 8 plus at least 1 and 2 and that's that's again breaking the bank. So that's got to be 1 2 or 3. Now. And that digit whatever it is because of the windoku trick I mentioned earlier. Not only does it not go in those squares, it doesn't go in any of those squares either. Um, okay, I don't know what to do with that. Uh, let's do another arrow. Can we do... Yeah, okay, so we can. We can do exactly the same in this box, I think. So this, this arrow is going, that can't be a circle or it would have two arrows emanating from it. So it's got to do that. And now this is clearly an arrow cell. I mean, it's clearly, 
you know, the, the arrow is going into this cell, but if this was, say, the tip of an arrow, that circle would be 10 again. So that's got to be the circle. So is it, I see, it's the same, is it? Are these all the same? Yeah, okay. All right, so they're all the same. Because this, this digit, again, we can't have two arrows, so that's got to do that. We can't have two arrows, so that's got to do that. Let me just double check this now. So this, this must be a circle. The arrow must go there. Let's extend that down. This must be a circle. We've got, I'm going to have four arrow cells that all have to be different. And then that goes down there. So we've got some sort of symmetrical. Is it, is it actually? It is. It's very symmetrical. We've got a very symmetrical thing going on here. And each of these circles has to be at least seven by absolutely identical logic, which means each of these squares have to be ones, twos or threes. And in each case, they're going to have to appear on their on their on their arrow. So we're going to label this in case it yields a deduction. I uh, don't actually yellow might might have been a bad color. Have I got a better color? Red, maybe. There we go. That's prettier. And I can see it, which is a big advantage. Right. So now I've got no reason to suggest what I'm about. To, and I've got no logical reason to suggest what I'm about to suggest. But it does feel to me like imagine all of these digits were a one they would all be looking at the middle box and allow us to place a one in the middle of the grid. So I, I bet you these are all the same number. Now, how would we prove that? Why are these all the same? I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, let me think about other things then. We've also got, look, a black dot here. So that's presumably restricted. Yeah, yeah, that is restricted. It can't be three, six, can it? Because then these, these two squares would both have to have the value of zero to keep this down to nine. So this is either a one, two pair or a two, four pair, and it has a two on it, which is potentially going to be important. What actual values? Yeah, we can. Hmm, okay, you can't go as high as six on, I think, any of these lines. That might be. Is that overkill to say that? Hmm. I'm, I'm debating doing a sort of proper pencil mark job and doing that. The only reason I, I'm. I would normally not make such a, uh, a splendid pencil mark, <laughs> um, such a replete pencil mark. But the reason I'm just wondering about it is that that row and that row now do have an awful lot of the digits one, two, three, four, and five in them, which feels like it's trying to create a quintuple. Two, oh. It's a minor deduction. Two can't go there because there's a two in one of those. What about... Well, that can't be a five on a white dot because the five would have to go with a four and then those would add up to nine. So you can't have five on this white dot. That most certainly won't work. Could you have five here? Five, one... No, you could. Five, one, two, one would work. These are all going to be ones... Oh, oh, I thought I got it. No, oh, no. Okay. All right. One thing I've just thought of is that if we look at these little uh, triominoes around every circle, they've all got to have one in them um, because they must add up to no more than eight, given that, given that these, these sort of external colored cells are at least one. We can't have these adding up to more than eight. And eight in three cells requires a one, because if you try two, three, and four, you'll get to nine. And then adding that one in will take us, will we'll bust bust the bank, won't it? So so what this means is there's sort of a, sort of like a floating X-wing. We can ask where one goes in, 
in row one, for example, it's going to have to be in one of those squares. Where does one go in column nine? It's going to have to be in one of those, one in row nine, one in box four, or column one to be more precise. Uh, why are these all ones? <laughs> why? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, in fact, what is going on? I think it, it's going to be the Windoku somehow. There's really we there's really not much to go on, is there? Assuming I haven't missed, and this is a very big assumption. In fact, I'm now noticing that I may be. I I, I think I used grey on on the arrows because it was consistent with the actual grey in the grid. But it's not. I I can't really see it very well now. So I might I might go over this again. Let's let, let's see. That's better, isn't it? I can I can see that much more clearly. Well, a bit more clearly. Um, maybe I shouldn't use. No, it, I think it's still better. Let's use that. Yeah, I'm going. I am going to do that. It's because I, I was I was struggling to see the the arrows a little bit. So, oh, I, it won't even let me do this one. Why doesn't it? Let, oh, it is letting me now. That's good. Um, and then this one's got to be like this, going into the circle. There, there we are. But we've got to remember that these arrows could still extend. Um, I've got nothing here. Uh, <laughs> this is like the other day. And I did that wheels on the bus puzzle. Normally, I have some ideas when I'm looking at a puzzle. I'm, I might have ideas that I don't really like and I don't fancy exploring very much, but at least I could do some. I can do something to let my subconscious work on the puzzle. Um, there's something I'm missing very that's very serious about this because if that's two four, two four. Oh, that, that's that's absolutely fine, isn't it? If that's five, that can still be one, two. I don't understand. I have a fear that I'm missing something terribly obvious. Or is it? It is. Is it set? Those nine digits have to be all different. Oh goodness! No, I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> I've just stopped talking. I haven't got a clue. Um, oh. <laughs> uh. oh, I thought I'd had a good idea then. No, that doesn't work. I was I, I was wondering about high digits. Um, but, mm, God, that's nearly interesting. Uh, it would work. That would work if these two could, weren't high digits. I was thinking that this this box needs to have six, seven, eight, and nine in it, and this box needs to have six, seven, eight, and nine in it. But this column, you could only put six, seven, and eight, eight and nine once into those squares. And therefore I was thinking maybe that's a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple, but that's not true because these, we can leak the sevens, eights, and nines into those two squares and they can escape. So we can't label this as a six, seven, eight, nine. In fact, it, well, I'm not saying it definitely isn't, but Ah, ah, but that thought is not perhaps as dense as I was fearing.
Oh. <laughs> because we do, well, hang on, let's just think about sixes then. Let's, let's so forget about all the high digits, just think about sixes. <laughs> just trying to think about this. It might mean that there's a six in the middle of the grid. Is that right? Is that right? Can't put six there. I think there is. I think there's like a, a chasing effect with sixes. So there's got to be a six in one of those squares and there's got to be a six in one of those squares. But how so so but we can split uh we can split these two L pentominoes. If I um let me let me think about how to explain this clearly. If I just greenify these cells for a moment, we know that these dark green cells contain two sixes. But these dark green cells can be split into two Sudoku units. What do I mean by a Sudoku unit? Well, I mean like a box or a column or a row. And so I could split these two units into column six. So I can only put one six into these squares. So there must be one six in the other unit, which is box six here. There must be a six in one of those squares. Now, obviously, we don't know at this juncture where the six is. But we do know one of these cells is a six. So let's just pick one because I don't think it matters. Let's pick a six. Let's say the six was in this domino. Well, now we can apply that logic up here, can't we? We can ask where the six is. And the six is gonna to have to be there. And now we can ask where the six is here. And it's gonna to have to be there. And now we can ask where the six is here. And it's gonna to have to be there. And now if you look carefully at the grid, there are in effect four sixes looking at the middle box. And had we gone, had we decided to try the sixes here, of course, it would have just, it would have just flowed round the other way. It would, have, it would have done this. And that would have put, the sixes would have all been in the yellow squares, but it still results in the same deduction, which is, I think there is a six in the middle of the grid. Now, this is the moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> there's a nine there's a given digit oh well that's going to do some well this is bad this is this is it we've done it we've done some we've done some serious work on fixing the puzzle hang on let me just let me get rid of my my um colorings there for a second there we go um because this arrow looks a bit suspicious now and by the way let's just let's just stop and admire that six because that is not in that is not an easy digit that is not an easy digit, but it's an incredibly beautiful digit. Um, and I'm now worried that I should have appreciated that far more quickly than I did. I don't know if I'd thought about high digits more quickly. I was a bit, I was obsessed with the low digits. I should have probably got that more quickly. But anyway, let, let, I think we know this digit now, don't we? Because this, this is an arrow, the minimum I could make those squares would be a one, two pair. And we can't add up an arrow to more than more than nine. So I think that's got to be a circle, and it is. So now that's not nine. This this isn't nine, because it sees the nine in its windoku thingy thing. So that's a seven, eight pair in row three, which is Uh, possibly interesting. One comes out of these squares by our old friend Sudoku. Nine is in one of those three squares. We, w we really want it in there, don't we? So we can get rid of the nine from here. Um, we've got... We can't have... F no, we can't have five now on, on, on these arrows. Because if you have five, the minimum those three can add up to would be eight. And once you add on that digit, you're going to get at least nine. So that's not five. That's not five. That's given me a one, two, three, four quadruple in row two.
um, which is t 10 of the 15 ah, that, that's beautiful so that's it we've done it we've we've well we haven't done it but but I now know what these two digits are so oh, they can't all be ones no because I can't put a one in the middle anyway th these um, I know these two are ones now and that's by ma maths so I know 7 plus 8 is 15 <laughs> knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic but I know that that is a quadruple that adds up to 10 so that means these whoopsie these squares here have to add up to five or well, how on earth are we going to achieve that given these are in the same sudoku unit so they have to be different so the minimum they can be is a one two pair which will give us which means these two squares have to add up to two which means they are pregnant pause one there we go beautiful so now we get to do some more tidying up we get a one here so this is a one that's going to clear a bit of fog is it that's going to give, give us a two here um, that oh okay from our earlier logic we knew one of those squares was a one so now it's this one so we are so this can't be a one now oh which which we can see from but yeah the way i was thinking about that is because i'm strange um is that i was thinking if that was a one then we would know there were four ones looking at the middle box and it would have made this a one but obviously that's not the case right so one one in the bottom row now is actually there which is revealed absolutely diddly squat. Um, okay. So what does this mean? You may well ask. I don't know yet. That can be four, can't it? Because if that's four, that can be a one, two pair. And then this would add up to eight. Bobbins, right. But I think... I think we're on the right track. Let's think about what this means. Can we put five on here? No. If this has five on it, by the time we add one and two to it, we'll get eight. And we're adding at least two to that, which gives ten. So that's not, not got five on it. But that one might be able to have five on it. Um... Can that be this one can't be seven anymore because if even if i make that a one two three triple well by the time i've added two to it i'll get to eight so that one is at least eight this one can that be one two three i don't know maybe what about, can we do better with ones? Oh, no, we can't. That's horrible. No, you can't do better with ones, can you? Because effectively, we've got five ones in the grid and we know the other ones occupy these little triominoes. So that's not going to work. Right, so I'm, I'm baffled again now. Um... Oh, I've got a white dot here that I've never noticed before. It actually would be incredibly useful if this was a 9. Oh, that can't be a 9. Ha! Huh, that, that is not a 9. I was about to say it would be incredibly useful if it was a 9, because then I would know that square was an 8, because to be consecutive. But if that was true, we'd have a 9 and an 8 in this Windoku box, and that couldn't exist. So that is not 9. So 9 is in one of those two now. Um, <laughs> do we know does there have to be a two in there yes there does if there was no two in there that would be one three four eight plus two again is ten so there is a two in here was there a two in this one or did we not know no there doesn't have to be that could be one three four plus one. <laughs> oh no <laughs> what about does that one have to have a two in it? Both of these must have to have two in them. Yeah, they, they, they do, because... Ah, yeah, hang on, I haven't cleared... Because we, we worked out there was a one-two pair in this row as well. So that's, that is a one-two pair that we should certainly record. So there's a two in one of those two squares and there's a two in the quadruple. So there are two twos. So that means I get two in column nine. Oh, 
goodness me. Okay, that was a long-winded way of figuring that out. Because there's a 2 here and there's a 2 here, the 2 in column 9 is in one of these three squares and there's a 2 there. So this is going to... Well, okay, I was, I was about to say it's going to do something, but I've, I've spotted one other thing it did as I put it in, and this is huge, because that 2 has displaced my 9 pencil. I said, that is a 9 didn't clear any fog but that nine is in the window cue box with this so this is now an eight that gave nothing um but now presumably we can work yeah this this has got to be a two now because if it's a three we're adding three to six at least and that's going to be nine so that's got to be two this has to be a one two three um triple that's the only way we can keep this working so that means I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That means something. Ah, okay. One thing it means is I can place two in column five, doesn't it? Because surely I can't have twos here because, yeah, we worked out that there's a two there and a two there. So the two in the top row is in one of those two squares. So it is there and that's going to clear some fog into nothingness. Um, this cannot be seven anymore. Because if it was seven, that would be a one, two, three triple on the arrow. And those four digits would have to be selected from one, two, and three. And that won't work. You will have to repeat one of them. So that means this is not seven. And that means it is nine by the power of Doku. Um, and we know there's a one. We know there's a one. <laughs> Do we know whether there's a two? No. Can we get... No, we do. I can do this. I can do this. Okay, where is two in row four? That's quite a good question. Because it can't go in the window cue box. We know there's a two up here. So that's a two. And that... Look at these two twos now. Pinching the corner. So there has to be a two on this arrow. Which we know adds up to eight. Because this is a one. So that is one, two, five of all things. So that's one, two, five... There's a 2 up here on the dot, so that's a 1 or a 5. So there's a now a 2 in this domino, which means that's not a 2. There is a 1, 2, 3, 5 quadruple in row 7, look. The five, right, and in this quadruple, the 5 is, on, is in this domino, so that can't be a 5. And the three is in this domino, so that can't be a three. Oh, uh, so this is a one-two pair. Now, okay, so there's going to have been a better way of doing this. I bet you I could have done maths on this bottom thing and got exactly the same result as when I did the maths on the top thing. Oh, okay, sorry. I, I probably I probably made that more complicated than I needed to. Um right. Now, <laughs> what do we do next? Eight in this column is in one of those three squares. And that's by that's using the windoku trickery. So eight can't go in those squares or it would repeat. The same is true of three. Where's three in this column? That has to be up there, which is... doing something isn't it that is doing something if i put three in this domino that becomes that then that is eight i think if i put three in here this has to be one two four plus one which is eight so if i put three in there that's an eight and therefore I, neither of these could be an eight so that would be an eight I put eight in there that becomes a seven and then that has to be one two three plus one to get to seven so you can't put three in there so that square is a three or an eight that is a peculiar and highly unlikely to be relevant point to be honest that's com that's really complicated it's a lot more complicated than anything we've done so far it's just it's just what i was noticing um you nearly not i was going to do the same windoku type trick it doesn't even work bother botheration i was going to say nine in this column 
but it doesn't work because uh, yes it's true to say they can't be nine that can't be nine so the nine could be in one of these but i think it can also be there in fact let's think about nines maybe it's nines that's the next the next window into this puzzle um nine is over there in box one I haven't had a nine in we haven't had a nine in one of the window queue boxes which is this one oh well that yes okay so i can rule it out of this square but not by using column four but by using this window queue box where is nine in this window queue box that nine knocks out all of those squares so that's very straightforward so now i get oh for goodness sake so now i get the nine in this column is totally obvious and that is in a foggy uh, botheration it was in a foggy cell it did nothing so okay so nine is in one of those two squares in box number thingy thing um now can we so if that's nine i can see this is a nine if that's nine ooh, that doesn't really help us at all Wow. Um, okay. So how do we do this then? Two, three, four. So this row, this row needs five, six, it needs five, six, seven, eight, nine, but lots of cells in it can't be nine, six, seven, eight. five six seven eight that squares five or seven it sees six and nine it sees eight as a corner mark there five um what about this white dot so that white dot has to have an even digit on it because it contains a consecutive pair of digits. And if you examine any consecutive pair of digits, you will find one of them is even and one of them is odd. So there is an even on, on here, and it's not two or eight by Windoku. So there is a four or a six on this white dot. Now, if it was six, it would have to go there. And that would have to be five or seven. Um... But if it wasn't six, it would ha it would have to be four. I don't, are we, oh, there are f there are some four pencil marks in the grid, but not many. Four couldn't go with three because three's already appeared in the Windoku box, so that would have to be a four-five pair. So this white dot is either a four-five pair, or it's very explicitly a six here. And then that's a five or a seven. That is that doing something? Uh, that's very annoying, actually, because that those two digits there contain all of the options for the remaining digits in this box. So we've got one, two, three, and eight, and nine approximately placed. So we need four, five, six, and seven. But this. This white dot seems to have all of the abilities in the world to be anything. If that is six seven, then this window queue box needs a six seven here. Oh, that feels difficult because that would put six in one of these two squares. So this would be three six eight triple. This would be a four five seven. That would be a six. That's that's okay. If that's six, oh no, no, no. I was about to say if that's six, seven, that's six, seven. That's not true, because if that's six, seven, you could put the seven in there in the in this sort of upper window queue box. Ooh. Okay, so I'm missing something. <laughs> I'm missing something here. Um, Hmm. We could. Let me double click. <laughs> no, ones are not where we need to look. Twos. 
So the ones and the twos are they are they are confined to these these triominoes all over the grid. Is that do we know the order of this seven and this eight? Oh look, that's a one or a two. That can't be a four. It's on a white dot. So the right, okay. Here's here's a tiny point. We said a white dot needs an even digit on it. Well, that's going to have to be two there, isn't it? So that's not two. This is not two. So this is one or three. This is one, three or four, really. If that's two, three, that would be one. That would be six. This would be seven. This would be eight. 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 If this is eight, it couldn't be a two, four arrow, which, oh no, it could be. No, it could be, because I was forgetting the one. I was thinking I would have needed a two here, but that's not true. If that's seven, and that's eight. This is one, two, four. That, and that's very annoying, because you still wouldn't know what's on the black dot. It could be two, four, or one, two, because that can be one or four. What's going on? Nines? Uh... It's got to be it's got to be a digit that I've actually I've actually got some use for. Is there some reason that I know the order of this seven and this eight? I know the seven is going to have one, two, three on its arrow. Um No, okay. I don't. I don't think I. I do know that five. I do know there's a five in one of those, but that's. So there is a five in one of those three cells, but I don't know whether it's on the white dot or not. There's no five in these digits. Could this be a five? Could that be a five? Ah, wow, that's very odd. That is very odd indeed, but that can't be a five. That is weird. This is a weird deduction. That's, ma that's sort of magical, actually. That might be no. The six was the six was incredible, but that is a close second. That's weird. That can't be five, because it begs the question: Where do you put five in this windowku box? If that's five, you've got to put it in one of those squares, because it can't be here and it's not in any of those. So there'd be a five in one of those three. But the same question can be just asked there. Where does the five go in this window cue box? And it's not there, so it's got to be there. And you get two fives in row four. That's weird, isn't it? That's really nice. So that's a seven, which the problem is that's not going to resolve the... Well, although it's given me an arrow, I didn't know. That was odd. <laughs> that, why, how couldn't I have seen that before? Hang on, I'm just going to unwind that. Oh, it's because it, it's all in the fog there. Okay, that's fair enough then. I just didn't, it didn't occur to me there might be something hidden in the fog in this row. So we've got seven here. We've got a, we've got an arrow here, right, right. And now that's lovely because I know what that square is. That's nine. And that's because what's the minimum value of these two, two arrow cells? They can't be one and two. So they're at least three and four. So this is at least adding up to seven. But it sees a seven and an eight in its row, so it can only be a nine. Um, that got rid of a, fog, a foggy piece as well, but I couldn't see, didn't seem to reveal anything, did it? Right, so what does that mean? Has this broken the puzzle open? It might have done. This domino is not one eight or two seven, so this is either three six in a very specific order. Oh, well, hang on. No, it's not 3-6, is it? Because that digit can be neither 3 nor 6. Oh, this is so clever. 
I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm just questioning myself here. But that certainly sees six, and I've got a three pencil mark here, which seems to be valid because one of those is a three. Yeah. So that this has to be a four five arrow, I think. And if that's a four five arrow, that digit is not a three or an eight. So that digit is a three or an eight. And we've discovered a three eight pair. Well, now I know that digit. That's a six. And this is going to go round the grid like, like we found at the start. Because it was the six that gave us this digit. But now that seems to have to be a six uh, for box two's purposes. There does need to be a six in there. So now... Now there is a six in, oh, this is great, this is great, because now there's a six here um, in this Windoku box, which means there is no six on my white dot, which means that the digit on my white dot is a four. And once there's a four on my white dot, it can't go with three. So that has become out of absolutely nowhere a four, five pair, which means this is a six, seven pair. I can't remember if that's the way I thought about that earlier. Um, it might not have been actually. There is now four in this domino in the in in the window in this windowku box for what that's worth. Um, can we keep going with sixes though? I think we might need to do that. There's got to be a six in one of these two squares. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> didn't didn't really do very much, did it? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure that's doing something. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> what does this mean? I don't know yet. This row has got an awful lot of stuff in it. It's got an awful lot of pairs in it. Three and six. Okay, so that's not nine. Three and six have not been placed in this row. And I'm sure there's a way of working out which, which is the order there, but I can't see what it is. I've got a little pyramid of nines. Three more nines to find. One is up there. Oh, one's down here, apparently. One's in this box, in one of those squares. Not that one. Okay, so we can't do that. Um, where's the obvious... Where's the obvious weakness now in this puzzle? It is... Hmm. I don't know. This is, I mean, this is actually, I think this is quite a challenging puzzle. I didn't look at the um, the rating on Logic Masters. I probably ought to have done. Because this is certainly, it's, it's seriously interesting and very clever. But I think, uh, maybe I'm out of practice with Windoku, but I can't see what to do now. Um, if... No, I was about to say, what about seven in this box? But thats I don't think that's going to be useful. If that's eight, that's three. And that's going to put some things on this arrow. Is it going to put the right things on this arrow? Yes, it is, isn't it? Because it's going to knock three out of here. And that's going to be a one, two, four, triple with a one. Which does add, add up to eight. So that's fine. Oh, all right. We'll do it a different way then. Yeah. Okay. Where is the three in this box? If that's seven, we know that this is a one, two, three triple because we've got to add one to it. But the three is going to be in this domino. And if that's eight, that's three. So there is a three in one of those three cells. Don't know which one, but that is knocking three out of here. And that means that well, that, that's done it. So now this is a one, two, four triple plus, so which is seven adding up to one. So that is eight. There we go. Um, that's therefore seven. Let's make sure I press the right button. So this is now one, two, this is now one, two, three triple. Um, let's just get rid of everything then in terms of pencil marks and put that in one, two, three triple. So 
we know that this has got two in it. So that's a one or a three. There's a one, two, three triple in this column as well. We, uh, we know that this is a one, two pair in this row. Ah, no. Yeah, no, that's great. So this is a one, two, three triple. So that's got to be eight, which means this has got to be three. But more to the point, there's a three in that triomino there. So that's got to be a six. There's something emerging from the fog up there. Ah, uh, no, no, no threes in the corner. <laughs> There's none. This three knocks two out. That one knocks a third out. And there is a one, two, three triple in box nine. So we don't get a three in the corner today. I know what this arrow is. It's a two cell arrow and it's not got one, two or three on it. So it's got to be a four, five pair adding up two. You've guessed it. Nine. Therefore, this squares an eight in the corner. I've got a four five pair. I've got quite a lot of stuff going on in this column. Look, I've got a one, two, three, four, five quintuple or a one, two, three, triple and a four, five pair is another way of putting it. So I need six, eight. And where does nine go in this column? It can only go at the bottom is the answer. Um, so these squares are a six, eight pair. So we know where the six goes now. So that's six. That's eight. Do we know what this box is? No, we know that's a four or a five using this windoku box, which gives me, okay, so in this column now, we've not put sixes and sevens in and there's a six here. So that's got to be a six at the bottom. That's got to be a seven. This squares a three by the power of box six. Now, what do we need down here? Four, five, and seven. That look, That's great in the sense that it looks right, doesn't it? Because those digits have not appeared there. So column logic is agreeing with box logic. Um, <laughs> some interesting noises coming from outside. Uh, it's it's children having fun. So I hope if you can hear that, it makes you smile rather than <laughs> rather than terrified. Um, okay. Well, what's going on in this row? Where's five in this row? It seems to have to be there. So that's five. That's nine. That's the fog cleared away. We now have a fogless puzzle. And can we get the six and the seven here? Maybe, maybe we can, but I can't see how. This, we know what this windoku box is going to be filled with. It's got to be filled with three, five, and seven to work. So that square's become a four. That's become a five by windoku. That becomes a four. That becomes a five. That becomes a four. That five sees that one. So the four and the five go in. This row hasn't got an eight in it, so let's plonk that in before we forget. Now we've got to put three and five into this column. So that's five, that's three. That square now is five or seven apparently, which means that square is five or seven, but that's fine because it most certainly can't be five for dual reasons. So that's got to be seven, that's got to be five. We get a three, seven pair over here. We get a six, eight pair here, and that eight is rather useful. Eight and six go into the grid. Six and seven go into the grid. Seven and three go into the grid. Um, five does the five and the four. Please, six, seven, eight down this column. That's not six. Now this must be three and four by the power of Sudoku. There's a three here, so that's a three. That's a four. That's a one, apparently. So this this dot has become oh so it's a two four dot and we know the order apparently so two four one three two three um, and we're left with a one two pair somehow which hopefully will be resolved by the left hand side then this has got to be a one by sudoku so that's one two five that's two that's one um now is it done it probably is i think Five has to go live in the corner over here. Four, seven, six, seven. What are these squares? These are three, four, and eight. Let's put them in. Three, four, eight. What's what's revealed? That's an eight at the bottom. It can't be three or four. Three, four looks great there, doesn't it? Because that's actually right in terms of the windoku. Here we go. Seven, six. That's eight. That's seven. That's six. Wow. 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 Yes. <laughs> A smidge under the hour. A smidge under the hour. By the time I've raved about the puzzle, it will be longer than an hour's video. But actually, that was that was challenging. There was a, there were several points in that puzzle where I was 
completely lost as to what to do the beginning um, wherever I got stuck after that where in the end it was this beautiful thought around a five going in this square that was hard that was hard I've never seen that before in a window coup puzzle um, but it's such a simple idea isn't it if these sort of two by twos are used up then you just cannot have a digit in either of these two squares actually that doesn't appear in these cells because you'll cause two of that digit to appear in those cells that's really it's very simple a very natural idea but also sort of strange to me for some reason that's just wonderful it's wonderful foggy loop by anti night taker oh foggy loop that's what the beginning's about that's what the begin that's the idea of the sixes looping round it's because the sixes are forced to loop round no matter where they go we did a foggy loop i only just got that <laughs> never mind not for me anyway thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments how you got on with the puzzle i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and if you are a patron don't forget go and check out shapes uh, lines and shapes and enjoy enjoy some some puzzle solving over there too and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic <laughs>